I'm not so sure HBAR is a good investment anymore, especially when you marry it up against the other ISO tokens. I want to get into why this has been a thought on my mind recently, and it all came about after a one-on-one -on -one call that I had with a client. And the question really was about HBAR being a good investment or not. And of course, none of what I say is financial advice, and it absolutely cannot be. You have to make your own decisions. But I did find myself in a trap of basically grouping together all of the ISO tokens and saying these are the right ones to invest in. And that's not enough information, I don't believe. I think finding tokens in that ISO 20022 range in that sphere, and if you don't know what ISO is, I made previous videos, you can click the I on the top right of the screen here to go and look at what ISO means. But just saying, oh, it's an ISO token, it's actually a really good investment just because of that, isn't the full answer. What it more comes down to is, let's look at a starting point for where we should be looking to invest. The ISO group of tokens are a perfect starting point because if you look at the International Standards Organization and how the 20022 update included messaging that can pull or retrieve information from a blockchain, we can put two and two together and say the new financial system is going to pull information from blockchain. And so if you are in assets that don't meet that classification or don't meet the standards, they're likely not going to be in that stack of assets that come up to form the ecosystem of the new system. And that's as far as the rationale took me, right? I didn't ask any further questions, but it became apparent very recently that actually looking even further at the tokenomics of these specific blockchains could really help to inform our decisions moving forward. And the big thing was, how do the tokens work? And let me talk about XRP just quickly for a second here. When you look at XRP and its utility, what it does requires the XRP token. XRP has a utility that is based on supply and demand. If there are more people using that network, more tokens are inevitably gonna be taken out of the supply. The demand is going to increase over time with a smaller supply, and this is called the virtuous cycle that Molly Elmore talks about. And so the price of an XRP goes up directly in accordance to the utility of the asset. So the more the XRPL is being used, the more XRP tokens would be required. And therefore, the supply and demand relationship, the price has to go up for XRP. For me, this is a very positive tokenomics when we're only talking about the price appreciation of the asset. But HBAR is slightly different. It doesn't work like that. And we often, and me included, apply this blanket over all the ISO tokens to say they're all gonna go up in value, which, you know, is likely, but it's not the same comparing XRP and HBAR, for example, and saying they're gonna go up to the same degree with utility when that comes, because it's not true. So I wanna talk about a few positives that HBAR exhibits and why this actually would be good for price appreciation over time. And then we're gonna go into the negatives and this is where there are stumbling blocks for me when I'm looking at assets to invest in and why HBAR isn't making the cut anymore. So HBAR's tokenomics are really strange, really interesting, right? Essentially what they have is a predetermined amount of HBAR that is available and that's 50 billion. However, they limit the amount that is currently available and slowly increase the percentage that is available over time. So while there might be 50 billion tokens that are even possible on the Hedera Hashgraph blockchain, only a small percentage of the HBAR that is possible to have is actually even available, it's actually even unlocked. So every certain amount of time they release HBAR into the market. By doing this, they make sure that the, the whole system isn't flooded with tokens because if they do get flooded with tokens, it devalues them. Again, this is a supply and demand thing. And done properly over time with a really steady and gradual increase, could help the price of HBAR go up over time. Next, we have network security and how this plays into the role of increasing HBAR's price over time. And this, I think, is where the stumbling block occurs. Because we look at the company Hedera, we must understand, and we should know this, that company like Ripple isn't the same as XRP, even though Ripple utilizes XRP and has built the technologies around the function of that asset. Hedera 
and HBAR are also different. The company Hedera is going to see some massive growth in this ecosystem. It's going to be one of those ISO tokens and really it represents a singular and unique technology in Hashgraph technology. In the security sphere, HBAR is going to win hands down. And it's only because of the projects built on the blockchain would HBAR's demand increase. And that could potentially drive up the value of HBAR. Thirdly, there's decentralized control with HBAR. And obviously this can create lots of security and stability for everyone involved with HBAR, right? And that can give a, a sense of trust. And because of that trust, people might opt more for HBAR. And that obviously with investors in mind could increase the price of HBAR just because there's a sense of trust, security, and stability. But let's get into the negatives of HBAR and ultimately this is what's kind of swayed my thought process and why I won't say any more from this moment forward. Any of the ISO tokens, just go for it. You know, that's that's not what I'm gonna be saying anymore. And here's, here's the reason why. The first thing is about slow appreciation of HBAR. Because HBAR is released in this slow and measured way, it's actually designed to discourage excessive speculation in the asset. So the way that they're doing the tokenomics, the way they're releasing that release schedule of HBAR is actually for continued stable and slower growth over time rather than this massive increase due to speculation. And I think the majority of us in here are looking for that kind of explosive move. And because the way the tokenomics work, it's not suited for that explosion to happen. It will always be at a lower percentage of growth than the rest of the market. For example, if XRP and XLM and XDC, they all went up 100x, for example, HBAR likely would only go up 20. It would be limited because of the way the tokenomics work. And obviously 20x is really nice, but compared to 100, this is why I'm making these decisions. And so it puts me in this really sticky situation because Hedera, amazing company, it's gonna do massive things. And the HBAR token that's on that blockchain is also gonna do some great things. But we have to really align our vision for the future. I know many of us are in here to kind of buy and hold. But when we look at buying and holding, there's also a number on that for us individually. Like, do I want to buy and hold an asset that goes up two times? Or do I want to buy an asset that goes up five times over the same time period? You're just going to choose the one that has more upside for you. And so separating Hedera, understanding that's a great company, but then comparing that company and its asset to other assets in the same ecosystem of this ISO ecosystem that I talk about, it just seems to me that it's not quite worth it. However, I will say this, if you're in security and you understand this Hashgraph technology and you know how revolutionary it is, I typically would like people to be investing in areas that they are interested in themselves. I think it makes the peace of mind during your investment years a lot higher because you're investing in something that you actually understand. If you don't understand XRP, but you do understand Hashgraph technology, this is where you should be. This is where you should exist. But for me personally, because of the release schedule and the way the tokenomics work for HBAR, it's not one that I'm gonna be you know, pushing forward, even though the company Hedera is gonna do big things, I just think other tokens are gonna to do bigger things. And we're really only talking from the lens of price appreciation of the underlying asset. You never know, Hedera could be the biggest company out of all of them in the ISO group. It could be, but the asset won't necessarily reflect the value of the company in the same way Ripple's XRP would or Stellar's XLM would. And for me personally, HBAR doesn't hit that mark. Of course, everything I say is entertainment, essentially, and this is just my perspective. So if you do believe that HBAR has more upside than the other assets in this ISO ecosystem, then please do maintain and stick with your investments. That's completely fine. But I like to be transparent and let you know everything that I'm thinking as and when I learn them. And that's the whole point of this, right? I'm learning as we go. I'm involved with it every day and I like to talk about it, but it's all a learning process. I wish I'd discovered this a little bit earlier about HBAR because then I could have shared this information earlier. But look, we're all on a journey and I learned it now. So <laughs> if you enjoyed this video and you'd like me to look at other projects within this ISO sphere and their tokenomics, please let me know in the comments. Please hit like before you leave this video. Stay emotionless and I'll see you in the next one. You can also watch one of these videos on the left. One is a playlist of videos and the other one is a video that the algorithm believes would be best for you based on your interests. You can also click my face there to subscribe to this channel.